Are you doing what's necessary to get the success you desire? Hi, this is Justin Hitt from Inside Strategic Relations. With all the bad stuff that's going on in the economy, what's what's going on politically, what's going on in the general news and entertainment world, it is very easy to become distracted and stop doing those things that are necessary to get results. I want to share with you three critical success factors that are going to help you accomplish more in less time with fewer resources. The number one factor is to understand that you are independent of the world around you. Yes, you are influenced by the world around you. Yes, bad political and economic environments can be uh, pressure, you know, create pressure for you. But ultimately, you're independent of this because how you respond to these situations has more value than the situation itself. There's constant examples of people that are in difficult situations who still seem to achieve the remarkable. They still tend to achieve results. They're not special people. They responded differently to their environment. That's the only factor. Uh, So even though it can be depressing and frustrating and you see the evils of the world or you see, uh, you know, the news is lying to you, the government's lying to you, everybody's lying to you, you can still find the truth because the truth is there and it is verifiable. Ultimately, though, how you respond to this truth and the actions that you take for the results that you're looking for is, again, more valuable than the the negative situation. In fact, the negative situation is a signal that there is an opportunity for a problem to solve. So you should be mindful of that and and see it as a benefit. Now, you don't need a Pollyanna go around, you know, ignoring the facts. There are bad things happening in the world. But again, you need to be ready to respond. You need to be able to respond in a positive way. And then number two, you need to have clear goals established in advance. So a lot of people that I talk with in the consulting world, uh, they're not really sure what they want to accomplish, but they want something different than what they have. And so we go through an exercise where we try to determine based on the person's interests, based on their past performance, based on where they see themselves in the future, to develop a picture of where what it is they want to do. Where is it that they want to go? The future vision per se of what is goal setting. Now, having a clear target or goal is very valuable, but you're going to discover a few factors. Number one is that when you have vague, weak goals, it's very hard to decide what your next step is. Uh, Number two is that those goals, if they're too specific, you're going to find disappointment. Now, what do I mean by too, too specific? Well, if you say you want to be a millionaire in the next 12 months and you're going to have all this wealth and, and you're going to wear the only the color blue shirt, uh, the criteria is just something that's difficult to match based on your current situation. Uh, it's just as bad to be too vague with the goals as it is to be too specific. So we need to have uh, what they call smart goals that are uh, kind of a clearly defined chunks now, you can have big audacious goals that are over the top, far reaching, and but you, if you don't make steps towards those goals, you will be frustrated. So ultimately, you need to know what you want and then develop a plan on how to get there. But that plan on how to get there has incremental steps rather than just some magical leap. Um, there's this concept called magical thinking where you can delude yourself into thinking that something external is going to happen to help you get to your result. Like you're going to find the right person. You're going to find the right uh, product. If you had just had the next marketing software, your business would be better. You have to get rid of that and focus on tangible, meaningful goals. Because even if you're just reaching these small goals, uh, as you move forward, those small goals need to be tied to some larger achievement. And so that you can look back once you reach that achievement to see that you've, you've actually made movement from point A to point B. Uh, The third perspective that we're going to look at, and then we'll kind of uh, wrap up some action items, is the clarity in, in efficiency of the resources you already have. See, the world teaches you that Out there is the solution. The truth is out there. If you just had this other product, if you just had this other thing, that out there something is going to happen. And it feeds the other two points that I mentioned. When you have clarity in your goal and we have clarity in the outcomes that you desire, it's easier to see where you're going. But if those are diluted 
by consumerism, by the current thing, uh, by political pressures, by cancel culture, then you may want something that is not suited for you. And then even if you did achieve it, you're not going to be happy with it. So we want to be good stewards of what we have focusing clearly on the the resources we already have available are we best utilizing those now everybody has an unlimited demand for things unlimited desire for what's next the key to success is dialing in what really makes you happy what really makes life fulfilling And very often, that is not an individual activity. That is not something that you do for yourself and it's done and then you're always going to be happy. It very often is a very dynamic and sometimes challenging social environment. It's not social networking where you're connected with people you don't really know, but it's really sincerely getting to know the people around you and building up a network or community of mutual benefit. Now, in a, in a past report, I talked about mutual aid societies or other types of organizations that you form to serve you and your neighbors. So this could be a a social club or a fraternity. It could be membership in a country club. It could be a business that you've built. It could be a strong family set of bonds. When you evaluate your goals and objectives and you evaluate the available resources and you evaluate uh, what your desires are and what would make you, uh, quote, happy for uh, lack of a better term, because some people are very successful being miserable and they like being miserable. But my point being here is that this doesn't happen magically by yourself. Number one, you're going to need clients to serve. Some kind of customer, somebody you're solving problems for. It could be an employer. It could be a, a client base, such as a you know if you're a marketing agency or you're a consultant. Uh, it could be a segment of society. That's going to be clearly uh, stated and, and helping those people is going to help you. You need to know what you want and why you want it. Because if you just tell me you want to make a million dollars in 12 months and you're making $50,000 right now, uh, it's going to be a little harder to achieve than if you were already making $900,000 and you want to make your first million uh, or cross a certain threshold. I remember a long time back, way back in the 90s, I was 20 something and I was like at $98,000 a year and making six figures was my thing. I just wanted to make six figures. I was earning $98,000 a year in in the the dollars of the time. Um, And I just couldn't get past that 98,000. And I spent $122,000 a year trying to get past that 98,000. So I ended up getting debt. And it was like the dumbest thing to do. So I was focusing so hard on getting that that next level, that six-figure earnings when my net was horrible. So now I know that free net cash flow is better than uh, actual earnings because you can earn a million dollars and spend a million and a half and you'll be negative $500,000 a year. But you can spend you know $10,000 a year and make $100,000 and be $90,000 a year positive. You'll actually be in a better position making less money because you have more let net. Now money isn't the only thing. If you end up making a lot of money, but you're all alone and you're constantly frustrated and you know, you feel like you're not understood. A lot of these factors will cause you to do things that are in the long term detrimental. And you may even self-sabotage in order to get the uh, attention that you're, you're seeking. So when we talk, so I'm working with a client, we talk about the holistic approach to what they want to achieve, not just the tangible elements. What makes them a better person? What makes a well-lived life? Now, this is not easy to do. I can give you three tips really quick and, and you'll be like, oh, I'm on the right track. And then next month you'll be all depressed. The, the factor is, is that are you serving people? Are you building networks? Are you connecting with people who are both a positive influence on you, but you're a positive influence on them? Are you doing things in a way that it makes it difficult to receive setbacks? A lot of folks will will look at a million dollar business and they'll try to extract all the money out of the business without investing in the systems that make that business successful. So we talk about, uh, you know, getting better utilization of the resources you already have. If you're constantly looking to get the next software product to run your business, but you don't do a very good job of using the product you already have, then the the culture that you've created 
or the behavioral habits that you've created will not reinforce better utilization of the tool that you get. Instead, you're just being sold on dreams. You're moving forward and making decisions on aspirations, and then you're not actually achieving anything. I have seen large businesses run on index cards in boxes or physical file cabinets full of things rather than shared software platforms and environments. You can get results with very primitive tools. And that leads me to believe that the tool is not the most important thing. In fact, your approach, your methodology, your clarity in your goals and outcomes, just defining who your customer is gives you a better idea of where your customer might be located, and that will help you reach the customer and therefore deliver a product or service. So, you know, a podcast sounds like you're moving in a direction, but really when you sit down and do the analysis, when you sit down and have the quiet time with yourself, when you sit down and do the journaling, you'll discover that it is hard but it's not impossible. And that as you get clarity and as you connect with the right people and as you become valuable to a specific audience, it gets easier and easier and easier. And then what happens is you set up a momentum for success that's very difficult to stop because there will be obstacles, there will be setbacks, there will be things that are worth worrying about. But again, if you're not taking the action, if you don't have a habit of performance, if you don't have good stewardship, then it's harder to recovery, recover. So let's look at execution. Clear goal, best utilization of the resources you have, extending and building your networks. If you're going to extend and build your networks, you want to be connecting with the right people. Who are the people to connect with? It would be the people who you can serve in a profitable way. Do you see how this, this scenario works? Now, you can write all this stuff down, and then you can revise it, look at it, but essentially you're going to end up with a business plan. You're going to end up with a marketing plan. You're going to end up with some kind of plan. Now, in my book, what do you want? And uh, you know, uh, I think it's uh, what, what do I want and how do I get it? Um, in that particular book, I do have you go through an exercise, but it does produce a significant-sized manual almost an operating guide for yourself that gives you the mental clarity because you've taken what's in your brain and you've put it on paper. And then when all the distractions come, you can look at the paper because it hasn't changed. And then you can track progress and other factors there. My key point for you to take away right now is to understand that the world is really neutral. All the problems we face today have been faced in the past. All the challenges that people profess are keeping them back. All the excuses are pretty common excuses. They've always existed. Yet many people, much more than you can imagine, are extremely successful by anybody's measure. And you can be too. The key is, is what's the success measure that has meaning to you? Why? do you want to be successful? Then how are you using the resources you already have? I think I've done like 200 podcasts. You know, you can go through the library of materials and get answers to most of your questions. And, you know, I try to be authoritative and helpful and, and solve problems and, and things like that. But ultimately, if if the po- listening to the podcast doesn't solve the problem, you can literally visit the website at www.insidestrategicrelations.com. Go to the contact page and ask questions. You'd be shocked how few questions I get in relationship to the number of people who listen to the podcast. Um, but ultimately, the solution is there. There are opportunities that once you solve the problem there, that there's whole audiences that want to solve the same problem with you. There's products and services that you can offer and create that would be in high demand for the audience that you want to serve. There are monetary and physical and emotional goals that you could be achieving this year with a little bit of focus. Now, again, it's a little bit of focus and a lot of effort, but ultimately, these are achievable. These are outcomes that you can man- you can manage, you produce, and achieve. So I also want to leave you with a little bit of encouragement that no matter how bad it is out there, it's really how your mind interprets it and the actions that you take. 
You'll get better results working with people rather than against people. You'll get better results looking for solutions rather than worrying about problems. And ultimately, if you follow the three steps that we've given you here, you'll have clarity about the direction you're going in, confidence that you will achieve the results that you're looking for. Now, if you need specific help with this or you have questions, we do offer consultations and you're welcome to visit the website. There's more content out there. You're welcome to ask your questions. Uh, Your questions are the basis of these podcasts. It just makes uh, serving my audience easier when there are questions. Uh, But ultimately, I'm looking forward to hearing about your successes as well. And we'll share some of those successes in future episodes. I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations. Thank you for taking your time and being with me here today. And again, I'm looking forward to hearing about your successes, hearing your questions, and you can visit www.insidestrategicrelations.com where you can go to the contact page to ask questions or get our free newsletter that uh, is also available there. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode.